with Duran Duran, there's a lot of sound going on. And I've always said this, that the bass guitar, for the most part, has to occupy this quite narrow bandwidth. You know, you just need that really very direct, very punchy, deep sound. And I found these guys to just, to just deliver that. The best advice I was ever given was, you know, was when I was working with Bernard Edwards. And Bernard told me something that I feel like it, instinctively I knew, but he said, he said the bass has to take a journey from start to finish. And, you know, being the bass, it's a very nuanced journey. You know, we're not, you know, as players, it's not really about, you know, making something that everybody's going to listen to. You really just, I'm, for me, if people are moving or smiling, it probably means I've done my job right. It's not about like, wow, listen to that bass line. It's not about that. The bass kind of occupies this, you know, this almost unconscious level within the music. Um, but, but, you know, as, as a player and as a performer, I do want to, f for me, there's a, there's a story that takes place. There's a journey from the, from the opening bar to the end. And I like to feel, I, you know, I like to feel that journey. You know, when we started out, even doing a drop in was like kind of, oh man, you mean it's not, you're not going to play the thing from start to finish? No, you know, I remember our engineer on the first album introducing us to like, oh no, I can drop you in on that note. Oh wow, you know, that kind of like the Puritan in me was, you know, I wasn't sure I liked that. And then of course I, I got to like it a lot, <laughs> you know, but, but, but now it's like, you know, our engineer Josh is like, I mean, I'll play for a few bars and you'll say, I got it, chief. And I'm like, no, 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 hold on a second. Um, you know, so you really have to, I think as a musician in the modern rock world, you have to fight to keep that, that, that feel. I was still really wanting to play guitar when I met Rog. And uh, the first time we went into the studio, first Duran Duran demos, I was playing guitar and bass. And um, I just loved that interplay with Roger. I loved, I loved spending time with him, just like, you know, finding this groove. I just got this like, okay, so I've got to play with the kick drum. That's where we, you know, that's where we meet. We form this power. And that was the, that was the, the era of the four on the floor. Good times, boom, 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 you know, boom, 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 boom. And just trying to lock in those kinds of, those kinds of grooves. And we really got it quite quickly. Um, and then we'd start working on, uh, you know, corners, like, you know, and connectors like fills into choruses and we'd go over them and over them again and again. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, I mean, like you really get, certainly by Rio, you get the John Taylor, Roger Taylor rhythm section. You get it. That's what we are. We, we, we really hit it. Then it was like, okay, it almost felt like I needed to simplify. You know, the first couple of albums were about you know, saying as much as I could possibly say, that, that, that I had the technique to do, you know. And then it felt like, well, go any, you know, I didn't feel like, I, 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 I don't know, it didn't feel like, oh, I need to go further. I need to play more, faster, more. It was more about, no, I think I need to back off a little bit. And, and the music that we were listening to by sort of 84, uh, the bass was less vocal, you know, so then it was, and then we were starting to work more with, you know, drum machines. And then we were starting to program things, program bass lines up. And, and sort of by 85, 86, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm programming like Lin and, uh, you know, ele electronic bass lines. And then that's sounding really good to me, you know, like house music almost. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute, how does, how does that fit in with what I'm, what I do as a bass player? And, you know, and then you kind of, you kind of figure it out. Well, it's definitely changed insofar as there's a lot more integration with synths now. And um, I mean, even the tonality of the kick drum, you know, is taken into account now, which wouldn't have been back, you know, in, in, in the early 80s. Um, the bass occupied, you know, the, the, Shall we say uh, the, the 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 instrumentation was much more demarcated at the end of the seventies. At the beginning, of the, you know, there was the bass corner and there was the keyboard corner and the guitar corner. You know, now everything bleeds. You know, and I think because of the way that we work in Pro Tools and we layer so much. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll say Nick particularly will be working on something and I'll be like, hey, 
you're get, you know you're you're coming into my my area and uh, so then we it becomes a discussion you know uh, yeah I think synths and you know synths and bass guitars can be tricky um, and I think also the um, the way that we lay, the way that we grid everything today, um, there's a lot less, um, you know, ebb and flow. Everything's got to be right on that. You know, a friend of mine uh, that runs um, Hammersmith Guitars, another Canadian-based uh, company. I don't know how it came up in conversation with him, but he was the one who said, "Oh no, you you need to check out these." And, and he opened his phone and showed me, we were actually in Toronto, and he showed me the, the Dingwalls guitars, and I was like, holy smoke. I said to my, I said to Bernie, my tech, I said, we've got to get one of those now. <laughs> and and uh, I was talking to my tech actually last week about, you know, getting ready for the round of, next round of touring that we're going to do, and making this transition to, to the Dingwalls, you know, and bring, taking them to the stage. And it's, it's quite, um, you know, when you've been... I mean, I'm not a terribly exper experimental uh, player. You know, I, I, I don't, you know, I don't go onto stage with a whole range of, of guitars. Oh, you know what, well, let's try this one on this song. And it's like I, I tend to like the same guitar from start to finish. I don't really want to change if I can help it. You know, it's just like, it's part of my, my outfit in a way. Um, so, uh, yeah, making this, I'm quite excited about it actually to make this make this adjust, adjustment to the new guitars. I mean, PV have been my guys for years, you know, and one of the things I would say about PV is I, that they're, they're like a BMW, you know, they deliver. You, you pick it up, you know what you're gonna get. There's never ever any kind of idiosyncrasy. There's a great consistency. Uh, I just, I immediately found that to be true for Dingwalls, but there's like this other level of, uh, of tone and, and really aesthetic beauty. I'm a sucker for the, for the, I don't know what the technical term is for the way that the frets are laid out, but it's very intuitive, uh, the way that it works. I feel like it's, it, it leans into the player. It's, it, it's like it's, it's really giving, giving the player a little, a little bit of help. Um, so uh, this is the first album that I've used them on, start to finish. Uh, I've used the fretless, I've used the four, I've used the five. With Duran Duran, there's a lot of sound going on. And I've always said this, that the bass guitar, for the most part, has to occupy this quite narrow bandwidth. It has to be strong and tight and, and narrow. And uh, there's not a lot of room for air. And, um, and I found these guys to just, to just deliver that. You know, you just need that really very direct, very punchy, deep sound. And um, yeah, and they've, they've done that.